financial instrument. And the way the question is structured, immediately you read it, you must know it is a compound financial instrument because it is convertible loan notes. And I told you that anytime you hear convertible loan notes, man, that is a compound word, financial instrument. So let's see. Downing Co. issued $300,000, 5% convertible loan notes on 1st April 2015. The loan notes can be converted into equity shares on the basis of 25 shares for each $100 loan note on 31st March 2018. Okay, so the loan notes were issued on 1st April 2015 and can be converted on 31st March 2018. So by virtue of that, it means this is convertible in what? Three years, three years time. So we will convert this in three years time. Then we are told that either they will convert or they will redeem at par for a cash on the same date. An equivalent loan note without a conversion right would have required an interest rate of 8% per annum. The present value of $1 receivable at the end of each year based on discount rates of 5% and 8% are given below. So the examiner knows how naive some students will be or can be, so he will bring you the interest rate on the, sorry, the discount rate for the coupon, and he will bring you the discount rate also for what? A similar bond. So how do we split the total figure into eight components? So let's first get Proceeds from the issue. So proceeds from the issue, we are told that they issued three hundred thousand or three hundred thousand hundred dollar bond. So that gives us a proceeds of proceeds of thirty thousand dollars. And if you flip to the back side in the trial balance, you can see that there is five percent convertible loan note, and the proceeds there is thirty thousand. Now, this proceeds has to be split into two because we said the double entry for this is that we will debit the cash. We need to credit equity and then also credit debt. But the question is, how, may, how much do we credit to each of them? That is why we go through the stage. So the first thing is to calculate the debt component. So the way we calculate the debt component is to discount the cash flows on the loan notes using the uh, interest rate of similar bonds without conversion rights. So what do we do? We bring our year down, we bring the cash flow down, we bring discount factor, and we bring present value. So our discount factor, we must discount it at interest rate of similar bonds without conversion, which is the 8%. So if we slash it out, there are three years here, one, two, three. So how do we get a cash flows? How do we get a cash flows? On issue cost. On the issue, yeah. proceeds from issue. On proceeds. So 5% of 30,000, what do you have? <laughs> 1,500. So that is what will be received every year. But in the third year, it will be redeemed at SPA. So in the third year, they will receive their interest plus the nominal value. So that's going to be 31,500 in the third year. Discount factor, respectively, 8%. 0.8. Uh-huh. 0.86. Uh-huh. 0.7. So let's multiply up. That gives us the debt component. Sometimes one One 
What do I have? Two top. So the balancing figure will be the equity component. Now, after you calculate the debt component and the equity component, the debt component will be carried using the amortized cost approach. So you put your schedule up here, brought forward, interest, the payment, carry forward. So the first year, 27. 570. Remember, the interest here will always be the uh, interest rate of bonds without what? Conversion. So 8% of that, what do we have? Two, two, zero, six. What's it? 2206. 2206. Proud I guess. Then the annual payment will be the interest rate the company pays all the time. And that's thousand five. So carry forward. What do I have? So this is what goes to your balance sheet or your statement of financial position and the non-current liability as the value for the 8%, sorry, 5% convertible loan note. Then this whole interest here is, is what will go to your income statement as the finance cost for the year. Then this equity here must go to the balance sheet. If you go back to your trial balance, you see other equity here as 11800. So you're going to be adding this 2430 to that and take the whole thing to the statement of financial position. Because remember, this equity has to be recognized in the balance sheet. So you take this one to other equity, you add it to other equity components and take it to the balance sheet. So that is the workings for this note. Now, for me to, again, have an idea of what is happening, I like to do another working score of five, and that will be finance cost. For the trial balance, what is the finance cost there? The loan interest paid is this thousand five. That's what they have recorded there. But you know, in dealing with convertible loan notes, it is not this that we, uh, we recognize. You recognize the, this one. So that's not what you consider. You're going to be considering the bank interest there, which is the 150. That's the bank interest. And then you bring this workings, 2206. Because when it comes to convertible loan notes, it is not a thousand five that you take to the income statement. It is the uh, uh, main interest, which is the, using the effective rate. Now, this is just like the effective rate. Just that we're not told, OK? This is just like the effective rate, the 8%. So this is what, this two, is all goes to the finance cost for the company. Which one? This is high Paris line, financial instrument. So these are the treatments for this 
work with sir. Again, this question could have been on its own as a standalone item. And if it is on its own, the treatment is going to be the same thing and you're going to be considering what will happen on conversion. Then you come to note 4.